But um, alternative bits of evidence, like Lull, um, he did. Uh, he did a really good study, which I pointed out in the movie, which are, he's using data sets of a variety of kind, whether it be sediments or whether it be other sort of proxies, but across the world. So different types of, you know, evidence and across the world. So not, not just one site in America with bristlecone pines, you know, and then he will show you what is what we all thought up until global warming was in, should we say, invented, what we talked about global warming invented, is what we all thought anyway, just reaffirming that was already the agreed uh, concept that there was a little ice age, you know, in the early 1800s when the Thames was, you know, uh, frozen over and they had ice fairs and they played hockey and they sold whatever candy cane or whatever they sold in those days, mm. pre-candy cane. And, <laughs> you know, there was a, a, war a big warming in the medieval period in which, you know, you know, out of the mud, you know, you think of, I mean, you think of the Dark Ages, they were making Gothic cathedrals, which are more impressive than anything the Roman yes. Empire ever came up with. Yes. And that, how can you do that? It's money, it's wealth, and what is wealth in those days is primarily, it's food production. You know, all this stuff is, 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 is you, you, Chaucer talks about vineyards in the north of England. Yeah. Oh well, my, well, I'm not sure it would be the nicest wine in the world, but it has <laughs> vineyards in the north of England, you know. So, I mean, all the anecdotal evidence, as we call it, you know, and the Vikings in Greenland and their appearance and sudden disappearance, as of course, why did they disappear? Well, their food supply disappeared. It got too cold. And, uh, the, however, the Inuits or the Eskimos, whatever you want to call them, they survived through all that because they had a different diet. Um, so, all of the evidence that we've known prior to the whole sort of the, the concept of global warming, or cl this catastrophic global warming, to be more precise, it is all been reaffirmed by other studies. And certainly it's taken away from us with the man uh, hockey stick. And uh, you've got you to think there's something going wrong there. In other words, also what, you, what you're saying here is that the, the climate has always been changing, but now for some reason people are rallying behind something that basically we or they then don't have any power over it's like protesting against the fact that summer is moving in uh, you know in in one of the northern or southern hemispheres we can't really do anything about it in that way but we have the illusion that we affect it so incredibly much but but we don't but the basic idea again is that the climate has always been changing and it will continue to do so right james absolutely i mean first of all i mean i look i i, I, I go quite carefully in the whole idea of how much co2 can affect us there is a minute absolutely agreeable direct co2 effect which is it, just changing the solar force, uh, the, the, the actual energy balance. It actually, there is no disagreement with that. Um, it, there are certain bandwidths of radiation that CO2 absorbs it, but the problem is CO2 is already saturated. And so, you know, it's law of diminishing returns. You know, there's not, you can double the amount of CO2 in the atmosphere and one degree will go up. That's all the atmosphere is going to go up. That's the agreed portion. And then there's this positive feedback, which is the huge... Uh, matter of debate, but there is absolutely, as far as I've seen, and I've researched quite a lot, I've researched for two years quite solidly, I haven't seen a single iota of evidence to back this uh, uh, secondary, you know, feedbacks. Um, yeah, so, oh, sorry, what else were we going to say? Sorry, I lost the plot there. <laughs> well, the, the thing again, basically, that you, we were talking about a little bit was uh, the fact that the climate always has been, has been changing. And oh, yes. Uh, I'll go, go ahead if you're reminded. Yeah. No, 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 yeah, no, yeah, I remember now, thank you. Um, yeah, so it's always been changing, and, and I, can, I can perhaps describe, and I do think I describe, the reasons why, the most plausible reasons why, which is to do with the sun and the sea, what's why climate is changing. And, by the way, one degree in, uh, increase in temperature over the next century or two is really going to be an awesome thing. It's going to feed the planet. It's, not, it's a good thing, and, and natural variation, as we know, is natural variation. There's always noise in the system. And there is also forcings, you know, so there's different layers of, uh, of changes. But changes are always happening. They always have happened. And there's nothing we can do about it. What we have to do is we adapt. You know, our effect in, you know, some spurious claims of throwing, you know, sulfates into the atmosphere, some whack, you know, idea of churning sulfates into the atmosphere to prevent sunlight coming in to cool us down again. Oh, my God. Mm. So sulfate is a pollutant, not CO2. CO2 yes. is not a pollutant. It is a vital component is a central component for life. Um, it's no shape or form. You can never consider CO2 a pollutant. And um, these ideas that we can prevent the atmosphere changing one way or the other is, is very spurious. And uh, the best way, even, okay, let's say, let's go for, uh, for argument, sake of argument, CO2 is the problem. You know, well, okay, if CO2 is the problem, actually, uh, any of our CPRS, any of our emissions trading schemes will do absolutely 
uh, sweet FA basically change to that. You know, we can say if you we if we in Australia vested fifty billion dollars by twenty twenty, as in just threw this money at this scheme, which is not really as we discussed. You know, it's not benefiting industry. It's not really benefiting society. It's it's really uh, good money thrown at bad ideas. Mm. Then we only do ten percent reduction in CO two. So instead of spending fifty billion on the scheme, why don't we spend the fifty billion on re- relocating people, building dams, or whatever? That's you know, like people in Holland, they're quite well versed in looking after changing you know sea levels. Mm-hmm. So even you know what I mean. So even for devil, you know, devil's argument, you know, that that, that CO two is a problem, we, that wouldn't be the right way to go about it. I your, think. your question basically is: Are we spending that amount of money on the right place? Right? That's what you're saying. Exactly. We yeah. can spend a lot better adapting than um, trying to prevent our development and preventing the changes in the environment, which we can't stop. You know, this is this is what this, we can't stop the sun and the oceans doing what they want to do. Exactly. And, and then again, the question of how much CO two we actually do put into the atmosphere as well is 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 uh, an important point in all this. I mean, we, people have been looking into uh, effect of volcanoes, for instance, even 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 a simple thing as, as that. And and there was a um, article a while back which stated that uh, ba- basically 16 uh, ships these are we're talking oil tankers here uh, create as mm-hmm. much um, you know pollution as all, as all the cars uh, in the world in the world so our our cars yeah. aren't producing that much that there, there's a, the question but you 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 touch upon this idea of how much CO2 we actually put into the atmosphere uh, in, in your film tell us a little bit about that James well the amount of CO2 we put into the atmosphere is is minute. See, I uh, see the CO two in the atmosphere is virtually, you know, the humongous overriding important factor on, you know, atmospheric CO two is the oceans, and the, it's just it's a simple, simple equilibrium between CO two and carbonic acid in the in the oceans, and that's all to do with heat. So um, when the oceans heat up, they can't contain as much CO two as you get more CO two in the atmosphere. So really, that's what it, that's CO two balance. Now there's other things you can go with. Um, volcanoes, yes, they they can churn out CO2 and they can churn out sulfates, which does sulfate cooling from. But these are that, that's a that's a short term sort of problem. That what well, I say a problem, a situation. Mm-hmm. You know, it can actually affect, let's say, the weather systems of the world. Was it Mount Pinatubo or whatever? It affected maybe for a year. It did. It changed it slightly. But these are all relatively minor effects. You have, of course, the CO2 going in and out of the balance energy, the uh, the CO2 balance between. Uh, plants and uh, methane from animals has been cited, and uh, you know there's other sort of uh, you know inputs and in determining factors. But in the, the day, it's about the oceans. That is the major factor, and it's not. And our contribution to the CO2. See, so I I gave us a 25 percent contribution, which is really uh, being very very generous mm-hmm. in the movie. I, so I, what I tried to do in the movie was actually not be controversial. Controversial. Some people. Because the energy, because sorry, the cubes, the energy, the um, CO two balance is extremely complex, and you know what? Instead of spending money on, you know, cutting down trees and planting uh, plantations for uh, ethanol replaced, you know, petrol, we should be spending money and spending all this money on climate models. We should be spending money on research that actually makes a difference. Now, for instance, we don't really know how different types of vegetation. Uh, balance. So you know, when they absorb CO2 to create sugars and create life, a foundation of life, and of course, when they die, they break down and release that again. Mm-hmm. And the, the actual balances between that, we don't really know about. They are extremely important. You know, so we should be doing spending all this money that we've been throwing at these climate models. You know, billions on these climate models. Fifty billion uh, has been thrown since like, 1990, I think it was, at, at this sort of research. God. And it's the wrong place. We could. We could throw that money at actual, you know, experiments that look into the real physical and biological factors that do create the balances in energy and carbon dioxide and these sort of things. You know, mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. that's the problem. You see, thinking, well, you know, this is a good thing. I mean, you know, okay, maybe there isn't global warming because of CO2. At least we're spending money on research, but we're spending it on the wrong research. It's the, there's a bias to it. It's, it's perhaps distorting where the natural flow of ideas should go. Do you know what I mean? Yes. So. It, it's not a good thing. You can't just say that throwing money at it is good because if you're throwing at it in the wrong approach. Absolutely. And, and again, you have a situation then where, where a lot of uh, you know, s- scientists, they get uh, grants and, and, and tenure doing this kind of research. Companies are set up in order to investigate these things. There are even the question of uh, 